All right, hello. So if you're coming from HBOM's video, this will be the video where I kind of just explain and analyze three um, really good strategies with Geraldo that will help you get very easy black borders. I'll do one on an intermediate map here that I'm going on right now, an advanced map, and then I'll show a pretty cool expert strategy using um, three very, very good meta Geraldo strategies that you can use yourself. So for the first one here, um, this is going to be Geraldo with tax shooters on Streambed. And as you may notice, this really isn't the greatest map for tax shooters. And um, I kind of did that on purpose because I just want to show that even with some disadvantages, these strategies work really well. So let's just get right into it. So for the start, um, I'm going to be getting just three dart monkeys. It's a very, very simple start and it works out pretty well. Just the one thing to note for this, if you haven't really done it much before, is that you kind of want to space the dart monkeys out a little bit, but not too much. And then I like to generally set one uh, to strong and you kind of want to put them on somewhat of straight lines. They don't have to be super straight. And then the last thing to note is that don't put them in your best spots where you're going to be placing other towers because obviously you want your better towers to be put in there. It's just something that works enough to get Geraldo right here and then once we get Geraldo we can get two shooty turrets. You don't really have to worry about the two shooty turrets going in the spots of the best tower because they can't steal the elk buff and their hitbox is absolutely tiny. So we can put them in good spots, we can put them along the straights. If you watch HBOM's video you know that obviously these shooty turrets have great pierce so putting them in a spot like that will be very good. And now I'm going to get a bit of an early game tower for this one. I'll just get a crossbow just to help us out. And obviously, as you know, that uh, just Geraldo's items won't really be able to work out to just completely solo the early game. So we are going to want to get a, like something like that. Then for leads, I'm just going to get a uh, the hot shots right here. This later will become a ring of fire just to kill off like the bigger wounds. Hot shots generally isn't that good of a tower um, to kill leads mainly uh something better that you might want to try is a 130 druid um, that's a very very good option especially on these single lane maps and then i'm going to be after that i'm going to be able to go into our overdrive i'll give it the camo potion just to help out with the camo on an easier map the crossbow might be able to solo but that's good with alk buff um and with pickle that will just kill the mob just fine now when it comes to the attack placements you want obviously want to put it like in bends and areas where attacks will get the most coverage but if you don't know putting it underneath the track is pretty much always better than over the track so that's why i have my attack shooters like this and um being hugged around the bend under the track is also ideal this may be like a really foreign concept and hard to understand but uh you'll kind of I, I, well i hope you understand it because that's just kind of how it works the tax shooters are better like that so now i'm going to be um going into support i'm just gonna get that um embrittlement right there to give us some camo detection and obviously the embrittlement will not always hit all of the pinks it will hit like the ddts and important stuff if it's in a place in a good spot but just because there might be some lone pinks that get through i'm going to grab that spike balls in range of our villages and we'll get a um alchemist on that spike balls too and it will also clean up anything that gets through i'll get that ring of fire to help like clear some ceramics and balloons because it's really good at that and the villages of course uh that will just be a, like a 102 and a 402, so we get the primary buffs and we get the discounts. That's just going to keep us going really far. If your placements are good, you'll just go fine straight into attack zone. Um, we could probably even like go to around 80 with this just fine, but we'll get the attack zone to be safe. And then I'll get the stim on this guy too. Now, I don't, I didn't really have to use much with Geraldo on these rounds, which is a good thing. You kind of don't want to be doing that so i'm going to like fast forward to when we're going to be doing stuff right here so now i'm going to get a bunch more tacks obviously in these like being hugged around the track underneath the track in good places like that and we get a mob glue what i'm going to also going to do is put the camo potion on the mob glue just so that we can glue the ddts before they're embrittled um it 
it helps a lot it might not make sense but it helps and then just gonna need a few more presses too now what we can do is we can get these upgraded sharp stones they're really really good on these tack shooters and then you can also pickle them too and then obviously you can use all of the other items i'm going to be ending this with quite a bit of cash spare and this this strategy is really really powerful so you probably can like uh diverge off and try like a, a fun tower if you want but this strategy is going to really help you out um there's two things i kind of recommend that i'm um, getting that i did not get here and that is a first strike for 100 or and a i mean first strike and a sabo for some of the ddts like on round 99 um for round 100 i did not have quite enough damage so i got a genie just to help out but um genies are also like really good or elsewhere and those jerry fires are also really good i did not really use a whole much of the items just because this strategy is so strong but on a harder map or if you want to be safe or if your like placements are not as good definitely can use them you have like eighty thousand cash spare so you use that so that's kind of the first strategy there and <laughs> right there i'm getting the towers that i said to get before anyways let's go into the next strategy and this will be draw the snipers and i'll be showcasing this on peninsula unlike that easier map that we have before we're gonna have to use a little bit of a more complicated start with like a little bit of micro and a little bit uh better placements so we got that sub we got the dart we did the uh little dart micro shenanigans and i'm gonna change the targets accordingly a lot of people for some maps like this just use slightly different starts but as long as you kind of get to the same area you should be fine and i'm gonna grab the sniper two to clean up now the weird thing about this is that you kind of have to remove the rock and get Geraldo late. So if I'm getting like Geraldo on round 14, that's fine though because uh, you'll get enough money to get the spikes and put it back there and then we can get the shooty turrets. So we have a little bit of a bumpy start but it's fine because we rebound just fine. And the shooty turrets also are really good on this map so at least that's something. Anyways, um, because we're kind of low on cash, we're not going to get the jungle druid before round 22. So what I'm going to do is just drop the glue right there, or else that round will kill us. Round like 22 and 23 can often be hard on these harder maps, because you won't get your stuff in time. And obviously the spikes there kill 24. So um, a glue on those rounds definitely will help out a lot. Anyways, now that I got the jungle druid, we're doing pretty good. I'm going to get my heli right here. Honestly, this might not have been the best idea to get the heli here, because then I won't be able to get more snipers. But it worked out good enough so that's like all that matters i still got a the black border with this example so now i'm going to grab the heli this guy's later going to become a uh, downdraft so it's okay to get him now i wouldn't really get like a heli like this if you're not going to be using them later because it's quite a substantial cat weight uh, waste of cash you could be using a tower that's going to like help out and do something later and if you notice my moab damage sucks right now so i'm going to be getting this main this soon to be main moab up to deadly precision and then i'm going to for around 40 just draw those um maelstrom right in the back there to help and clear round 40 just like that round 40 is down maelstrom cleaned up the ceramics very very cool Alright, so moving on, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a jury fire because my damage for like a lot of balloons right now is very sketch. So I just put that in the druid just to help out. It really helps out in round 47. Right now I'm finding a place to put the village. So we get the downdraft right there and then we're going to get the village. Normally I'd recommend to get some discount villages, but um, in this example I really don't have much space. So we're going to have to do with a limited amount of snipers. Um, Later on, I'll put in a screenshot of what like a kind of better setup would look like. You'll just have like the discounts um, with a 032 village, 202 village, and then a bunch more Alks and a bunch more 032 snipers. But this one will work out well. Instead, I'd just get a call to arms. Normally, you would want to spend the money 20k from the call to arms on a few more 032 snipers and 042 Alks. So anyways, we're getting the, we got the two 032 snipers. Um, I prefer to do this instead of uh, elite sniper pre-63 because it, it's just a lot more lenient. You can get elite sniper later anyways, so why not just get multiple bouncing bullets right now when it's so much safer to build into? So we get that, we get the elk, we get the main Moab, pretty usual. And then I'm going to be getting a um, 
205 elite defender kind of soon around 63 there was kind of close so we glued it very useful you could also use like a sharp stone on um the bouncing bullets that would also work too um, but basically this 205 elite sniper the strategy very important that guy stays on first uh, even if people tell you oh, you have to put those snipers on strong that guy stays on first it's very important because if it's on strong all those zmgs will pop down into a bajillion mobs and you are going to die anyways with that being said you might need to use like an item or two maybe like a jerry fire on round 75 to beat that round because that round can be a little bit harder but kind of around like round 78 you should get your elite sniper up and then you're gonna be good for now so uh, I'm just gonna grab the elite defender, make sure you keep it on first, and also make sure you put that elite sniper back on first, because it will go on elite targeting. And this is kind of like a setup that I'm referencing to. This was from an earlier video, but I just have like a lot more space to work with there. So I get the discounts and I get more snipers. And obviously, um, just having a whole bunch of snipers is a pretty strong strategy, it's pretty cool. So I get call to arms here, just to make up for that like lack of direct damage. Um, and now I'm going to be building a little bit of an ice bridge normally like the ice bridge isn't useful But for this case, I'm gonna have to um, You could get a snowstorm. I guess that wouldn't really be the first thing that I think of getting because the um, Downdraft is already pretty good ceramic support and the elite sniper is pretty good cleanup But we're just gonna be getting that so I can build stuff here. I'm going to get the mob glue I'm going to get the village down there and then I'm gonna put the camo pot on the stuff. The sharp stones are definitely great on the bouncing bullets. That's kind of like what makes it good. And then I'm gonna be getting uh, just a bunch of jerry fires and stuff. A few mob presses, like about two is fine. That's kind of all you need. And then we can just use the genies. Um, you can use like the maelstroms and stuff on, uh, what should we call it? Oh, on like round 98 and stuff. I generally would make sure you save a genie for 100 because 100 can be a little bit tricky the elite uh, defender does do a lot of damage on 100 but particularly on these shorter maps it may not be enough so doing a um 98 99 genie and then a 99 100 genie generally is recommended but this with but with this support and some of the rest of the uh, geraldo's support around 100 should be pretty chill like that and that's really all there is to that um the sniper strategy definitely it got a lot of nerfs but it still is really strong and that's just an example of a black border on it on a map like peninsula which may not be the most friendly to sniper spam all right so for this last example i'm going to be going over a little bit more of an advanced chimps challenge game using the tech terrors with geraldo of course, this is definitely a very valid strategy that would work fine for black borders on easier maps, but in this situation, I'm just looking at a bit more of an advanced situation. So for Ouch, I decided to go for the water start, and um, I wasn't really sure whether to do land or water start in this scenario. Um, it's kind of complicated, and it was a big decision, but I just wanted to make sure that I could stall if I needed to, I ended up not needing to, but that's all right because I had the option to. So I get the sniper, I get the darts, and then I go for Geraldo because I'm going to want to get the early shooty turrets. Um, on ouch like this, you can get good pierce because of these straight lines with the shooty turrets. And we can also put pickle on them to give them good damage. These will beat rounds like round 15, and then you can just sniper micro for the rest of the rounds. And I'm pretty much going to be going to in for an early destroyer. One of the kind of mistakes I made up here was that I did not do 1-0 um, sniper for the leads and instead got hot shots on the boat, which kind of degrades the value of the sharp stone. But that was kind of because I was very scared I, it was necessary for me to stall in the late game, which as I said, I did not. So if I knew that, I would not have done that. On round 24, I did not get camo. Instead, I just used the road spikes for the um, camo right there. And on 24, I mean 28, we're going to get the hot shots for the leads. As I said, this is kind of a mistake that I made a little bit. Uh, it cut some damage off of the... Uh, boat right there. 
So anyways, that's all. I'm going to reapply the pickle to the shooty turrets to beat round 31, because round 31 generally is a tough round, and then just some micro in general. Then we're going to put the camo potion on the um, boat there for 33, just so that it can hit camo. And then destroyer here on round 34. So pretty good, that's a pretty early destroyer. I did not discount it or anything, because I did not really feel like that. But from here, we still are kind of weak to that one lane, so I'm going to have to do some sniper micro. And on 36, we're going to be using last on the destroyer. I'll do that a little bit here and there, because that way it will target the bottom lane instead of the other lanes that it's closer by. So um, if I did not do that, the pink balloons on the bottom lane would just sneak by. Anyways, the rest of the round with pickle. Uh, the destroyer is pretty easy and then i'm going to out buff it to beat around 40 and then after that i'm going to work on my discounts all right so because i'm doing water start i'm going to have to be very careful when it comes to like the placements of the um villages and the super monkeys because you have to keep in mind i can't use geraldo cape on these so i'm gonna have to be using full hitbox super monkeys and i'm looking to get in two villages because if i miss out on the discounts i'm going to be losing a lot of money so what i kind of decide to do here is that i'm going to get one super in the middle and then one kind of off to the side a bit so i'm just going to sneak these two discounts in right there because i don't really have to get many other towers it's all right that i um uh like not like cut off some of the space right here i don't know it's kind of hard to describe that but um, just adding more pickles to beat some of these hard rounds. And then we can get the uh, camo village up there early just so that we save a little bit of money on not having to buy another camo pot. We're definitely going to need that way later on. So we'll just get that there. And then we'll get the super monkey. We'll get the snowstorm. I got that a little bit early then like a little bit before the second um, discount village just because I uh, couldn't really beat 40 seven well actually no i think it was 45 well because there's some weird thing with the purple balloons and the hot shots obviously that would not happen if i went for the um lead sniper but that's all right we got through it and then we get the two villages the drums and the camo and kind of here we're doing pretty well i'm not gonna have to spend a whole lot of draw those on draw those items because we have like pretty strong towers now we got kind of past the hard part where we were had to save up tons of money to get the ice with just one little destroyer that's always a little bit tricky but now i got the robo monkey and we're kind of chilling on around 36 no not 36 on around 63 i'm gonna have to glue it kind of made a little bit of a mistake on around 63 because i spent way more money than i had to if i um had just used snowstorm on the first wave then i could have uh put a glue down on the intersection and it would have enough pierce to get everything so i just wasted like 110 dollars there not that bad and then i well it's like not that bad of a loss and then uh i wasted another 110 dollars a little bit earlier because i could have just snowstormed around i think it was around 53 or around 52 instead of buying a pickle on the super monkey so that's eh not terrible but just a few little mistakes then I get the second super in both um, discounts, and I'm kind of, like right here, I'm kind of trying to look for pr possible priority buffs. With the way that this is set up and like the way that hitboxes work, I was actually really, really surprised that I got two perfect priority buffs on both super monkeys. So I can just put three two little alks on them, and they'll like help out the super monkeys a lot. That was actually really surprising. I thought I would have to do like a 420 alk on a snorm and then it would then put the rest of the buff on the super monkey. I've had to do that before a lot on ouch just because uh, some of these placements especially when you're using giant hitbox towers like super monkeys they can be really difficult so that's kind of one advantage to the um, land start but this ended up working out well and it actually helped me a lot. I didn't really have to spend much money. I got the buffs on the super monkeys and I could just go on. So now not really much is happening right here. These robos are really, really strong in the mid game. And we're just going to be able to go right into tech tears. I'm not going to have to spend any money on pickles or glues to beat some of these, uh, what normally would be harder rounds in the late seventies, just because these, these super monkeys are just so good. 
and honestly spamming robo monkeys is a very underrated strategy it's especially really good with the Geraldo cape but um this one we're gonna be doing tech terrors because the massive synergy with uh the tech terrors and the reju potions you'll see that a bit later you'll see it it's really really strong but we're just pushing through and not really much happens here through there um so i'll, I'll kind of just skip over to when we actually do stuff all right, it is 82. We have kind of saving up for uh, the second tech terror, but it's time to get downdraft. The downdraft micro, honestly, here isn't fancy. Um, I was prepared to stall if I needed to, but I ended up not needing to uh, have to stall at all, which is pretty cool, I guess. The abilities just worked out, and uh, it was pretty good. So we got that. Um, I don't think I used a pickle kind of here in the mid game because I just didn't have to. But in the later rounds, I'm going to have to put the pickles onto the tech tears just to get them extra damage. We're going to get a uh, Moab glue up here. I'm going to do 013 with uh, the um, primary training just to give it an extra pierce. And I'm going to put the camo potion on that, of course, so it can see the camo. Um, well not see the camo to give it bigger range because I already have the camo vintage. I'm going to do that on the other super monkeys too because that potion actually gives bigger range which can help a lot um, and a lot of times especially on a map like this where that extra range can really help take down a ZOMG much earlier so you can use the nuke ability of the tech terror. Just a little bit of stuff that helps. I'm going to get the sabo and that's kind of going to help on like a lot of rounds like 96 helps a lot on round 96 a little bit on 98 not really much but particularly 95 which is um definitely a hard round to deal with especially a strategy like this where the power is based on the ability some of these rounds are pretty easy going into 92 but 94 is kind of where we're gonna have to do stuff i also got sharp stone on the um uh boat because why not it it does actually a pretty decent amount of damage so that's nice and of course i'm just going to continue doing the downdraft micro nothing really that fancy right there so you'll see that i kind of use these tech terror abilities at the end and that's because i kind of wait for um the zmgs to get down so we can kind of like nuke everything all at once you don't really want to use them at the start because then you just have to deal with a ton of mobs and that's not nice so you want to just get stuff down and then clear everything at once. They have really good pierce and really good damage, which is really nice. So you can use that well. And round 95 is here. I'm going to pop that rejuve and use the tech terror abilities. It's just enough to get by. Also something pretty cool, if you did not know, if you give AMD to a snowstorm with the bottom cross path, it will still be able to freeze DDTs. Pretty cool trick um, that I use a lot. Anyways, we are moving on around 95, just using the stalls and stuff, and then again we're going to nuke the insides of these BFBs, like right here. Very cool. Well, the first one didn't really do much, but the second one there did a lot. That's cool. And then I'm going to Sabo just to take down both of these ZOMGs. First one goes down, and then the second one will go down there too. 98's a really cool one. Yeah, I don't even need a genie for this round. Just have to watch this. It's really fun. Bam. There's the first one. Snowstorm there. Second one down. And literally the entire round of 98 is gone. And then that's that part. For round 99, I'm going to need a genie, um, of course. So we get that down with the snowstorm and sabo pretty easy and then 100 all i need is one rejuve just with some good timing we'll get that we'll rejuve the abilities back and this is going to pop open i'm going to snowstorm sabo take out the ddts get the zmgs down and there we go so that only took 38 minutes pretty easy 45,000 cash spare and only 3.5 out of 10 difficulty so that's really it for kind of the more advanced run well, that's all. If you haven't watched Age of Bombs video, I'll put the link to that in the description. And have a good day. If you haven't, if you did watch it, there's a, you can check out one of the videos here. <laughs> Bye.